Welcome back to the SolidWorks CAD toy car project part two. In part one we put together the, the body section of the car. In this part we're going to look at the axle and the wheel. So to begin with on the front plane I'm going to sketch up a template for the for the axle and the wheel section. So this sketch is going to be quite important. There's going to be quite a bit of focus on this sketch to begin with. Um, as getting this right means that we we need to use less features um, to get this model complete. I'm also going to split multiple um, solid bodies out of this uh, this part and produce derivative uh, external parts. But that's going to become a little bit more obvious later on in the video. So to begin with, I'm just setting up my axle width. Axle width, I mean axle length. And here I'm putting the end point of the axle in. This is um, when we finish with the sketch, we're basically going to put together a revolve. So everything you can see in line with the origin point at the bottom is um, going to be on the revolve line. So just filling in the missing dimensions. Trying to use the minimal amount of dimensions possible to produce this sketch so it doesn't get complicated. Keeping everything fully constrained in the sketch. So this is the other end of the axle I'm putting in. So you can see the pin heads are um, forming, basically the heads that are going to stop the wheels from falling off the axle. And these heads are going to be identical, so we need to constrain this end equal, make equal length. And we need to constrain these two lines, make equal. There we go, so we've got a fully constrained pin, but at the moment it's just one one full length pin. So we need to split it, but we'll come back to that. So let's go to the Revolve Boss, produce our pin. So here for Revolve is our full section pin. But the pin is not going to be manufactured in one part. So we're going to go back into the sketch and we're going to split it. So front plane, drew this on the front plane. I picked the front plane because let's say we were looking down the front of the car, we would be staring straight at the axle. And the right plane would be staring at a wheel. So uh, here what I'm doing is I'm putting in a template line to divide the axle into two parts. So I'm going to insert one part into the other. Point one offset. So we want some clearance between the two parts. You could argue that you could go for an interference fit between the two parts, but just for the sake of the CAD, we're not going to do that here. Okay, and there's going to be an alarm out 
an alert from SolidWorks in a minute. So SolidWorks, for instance, is a problem. This is all linked to the Revolve. So we can we can ignore this. And then we can fix it in the Revolve. So let's exit and rebuild. OK, go back into the Revolve, fix the Revolve, because now we've got three potential solids. So they can select the contours that we want to Revolve. One and two. So we're telling SolidWorks which parts of the sketch we want to Revolve and which we want to skip. So we've now got two solid parts. Solid part one, solid part two. Let's give these solid parts names because we've we finished modeling these the two parts of the pin. Okay, but we need to produce the wheel. So we can go back into our template sketch. Back to the front plane, and I'm going to draw the wheel within this template sketch as well or at least the rough outline for the wheel. So I'm offsetting. In the other direction. So I'm going to offset my wheel from the pin by 0.1. Give myself some clearance. I'm going to sketch the extent of the wheel and upstand and that's that's fully constrained so that's dimension where needed. We're constraining or adding dimensions where possible. So, okay, so the top of the wheel is going to be rounded. So this is now construction geometry. So any construction geometry switch, get some this, move this dimension out of the way. So how big is the wheel going to be? It's going to be the rad is going to be 10 mil because in part one video part one we drew a template circles represent the wheel which was 20 mil diameter so we need to be consistent okay and that's going to finish the wheel well or at least the rough outline of it back into our revolve and then select another contour this is very much a style of modeling in SolidWorks there are various ways of, of modeling uh, you may prefer to model each part individually and then bring them together in an assembly but sometimes this technique is used for speed just and sometimes it's used for complicated parts so modeling various parts within a part and then exporting is a way of modeling but we're not finished with the wheel so let's continue so we need some tread tread marks so i'm going to basically i'm going to sketch on this wheel plane here. We need a circle. So I've converted this circle. Give it a dimension. So the tread is going to be 0.5 deep. And here is my, I'm going to have some reference geometry here. And these two lines are going to dictate my tread width. So 
So let's make them symmetric with my center line. Yeah, we're almost fully constrained. We need to dimension this and then we will be fully constrained. 10 degrees. Let's get rid of some of the excess geometry that we don't need. So we've lost a constraint. So we need to reconstrain at least one of these lines to the center. So let's constrain, make coincident. And after trimming, we've just uh, regained control. Add some detail, let's add some, add some fillets. You may decide to add the fillets after in another feature, but here I'm just going to do it within this sketch. Okay, let's trim excess geometry. Okay, so we now have one tread section. Okay, let's cut through, cut extrude through the uh, wheel section. Fairly happy with this. Yep. Let's press go. Oh, yes, we need to select the body. So we only want to, we only want to go through the revolve. So we select the body that we want to go through as opposed to everything. Pretty low risk here because the extrude wouldn't have touched either the other two parts, but it's just good practice to select the body that you want to, the feature to go through. Added a fillet. Okay, I'm happy with this. So now I'm going to do, I'm going to first show my axis and then second, a circular pattern. So my tread is going to be a circular pattern around the axis. Let's select the two features that have formed this tread. So that's the the cut extrude. Yeah, we need to turn the geometry pattern on for this to work because it didn't, sort of works didn't like it like it. So cut extrude and fill it um, twenty. We selected twenty and we're going three hundred sixty degrees around the part. So let's, let's just reduce it slightly to sixteen. Okay, 16 extrudes and fillets. Select the bodies. So the scope is just this body, the wheel body only. And there is the tread for our wheel. Let's rename the solid body wheel so we know what we're looking for here. Yeah? Okay, so we have this is a base template model. We don't need to model any more wheels or any more pins, although we're going to have two axles and four wheels. We have all the geometry we need to create our parts. So let's save parts template. And now we can begin to export. So let's export pin A, right click, insert into new part. Happy with this, press go. And we can just simply save pin A. So it's a pin A, it's just referencing the original part. Let's give it a color. Move away from gray. So metal pin, polished polish steel maybe, pin A, yeah, it doesn't look much different here. Will do when you render. Go back to the master part. Now let's export 
pin section B. Give it a name, pin part B. So you can see the template part, pin A, now pin B. Let's also give this a material. Polish steel, apply it to the part. Save. And one last part, we need to produce the wheel now. You can continue modeling in the derived part after you've exported the geometry, but we don't need to. We've done everything we need to do in our master part. So now exporting the wheel. Just rename it wheel. Okay, so uh, no new color. We're not going to make this. We're not going to make this part polished steel. We're going to have a darker color. Oops, let's go down to the colors. There we go. Finally got there. So rubber, we can try rubber. Map to rubber. That looks quite useful. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Right, so we'll save this. Okay, so that's it for part two. And we're going to continue in part three of this uh, video sequence where we will assemble the parts.